Oh, living the good life in Qatar. Welcome, guys. Hey, guys, and in this video, we're going to talk about one of the smallest countries in the world, but it has the highest per capita income in the world. We're going to talk about Qatar and its capital, Doha. Where is Qatar located? It's located on a peninsula in the Persian Gulf. Its area is 11,500 kilometers, which is about half the size of the state of New Jersey. The population of the country is 2.8 million people, and the population of its capital, Doha, is 956,000 people. Today, Doha is known for its futuristic skyline and modern architecture inspired by Islamic design, such as the Limestone Museum of Islamic Art, before coming here, I had this impression that everyone here must be extremely wealthy and that every other guy has a Ferrari. Well, of course, there's no shortage of luxury cars in the streets, as well as villas and yachts, but not to the extent that I was expecting. In fact, after two days, I only saw one Ferrari. Hi, hi. Oh, hi. Welcome to Qatar. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, goodbye. The locals here make up about 15% of the population while the remaining 85 are foreign workers. The population is growing rapidly. High salaries in the oil, tourism and construction industries are attracting a lot of foreigners. First, let's point out some cultural aspects. Qatar's legal system is a mixture of civil law and Sharia law. For example, adultery is punishable by a hundred lashes. Wow, that must hurt. In some cases, Sharia-based family courts treat a woman's testimony as being worth half that of a man. Also, polygyny is permitted. If you are in Qatar, you're one of us, says a sign urging tourists to dress modestly. And I agree, a little bit of respect will go a long way. Foreigners should avoid public displays of affection and women should keep their shoulders and knees covered. Alcohol consumption is limited and it's limited to some five-star hotels that are allowed to sell it. This hotel, Sheraton Grand, with a distinct pyramid shape, was the first five-star hotel in the city built all the way back in 1979. Today, the business district of Doha, the West Bay area, looks futuristic and is best seen from Karnish Promenade. This spectacular promenade stretches for seven kilometers along the crescent-shaped bay you can take a boat ride in the traditional dough boat. Should be fun. But surprisingly, the streets feel so empty. Why is that? I think it's because the city was designed for motorists. You either drive here or you use a taxi. Pedestrians are clearly not the biggest priority. To cross the road sometimes, you have to wait for like five minutes for the traffic light to change. It's kind of frustrating. What's the recent history of Qatar? In the 19th and the early 20th centuries, Qatar was part of the Ottoman Empire. Later, it was under the protectorate of Great Britain until it claimed its independence in 1971. Some 50 years ago, the main industries were fishing and pearl hunting. There is even a large oyster and pearl statue on the south end of the Corniche. But all of that changed once they discovered oil. Today, oil and gas industries account for 55% of the country's GDP. Qatar is lucky to have 1.5% of the world's proven oil reserves and 13% of the world's natural gas reserves. It's also the world's largest exporter of liquefied natural gas. Gas at the pump station is affordable. It's even cheaper than in the UAE, 45 cents per liter or $1.6 a gallon. The current Amir of Qatar is Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani and you can see his portraits on many buildings. Actually he's pretty young, he's just 39 years old. Those who are interested in the world news are probably familiar with Al Jazeera News Network, but few know that it was founded here in 1996 by the Qatari government. In June 2017, Qatar found itself in the middle of a diplomatic crisis when Saudi Arabia, along with Bahrain, Egypt and the United Arab Emirates and some other countries severed all ties with Qatar, claiming that Qatar was supporting some bad guys and military groups aimed at destabilizing the region. They closed off their airspaces, territorial waters and land borders to Qatar. 
Saudi Arabia even wanted to go as far as building a water canal that would separate the two countries and actually turn Qatar into an island. Qatar denies all of those claims. It's politics, so it's got to be controversial, so I'm not taking sides. Meanwhile, Qatar is in full swing preparing to host the greatest football event in the world, World Cup 2022. It's a huge responsibility. This will be the first World Cup ever to be held in the Arab world. Matches will be held at eight stadiums. Seven of them are being built from scratch. But what about the alcohol restrictions, you might ask? What are the football fans going to do without beer? At the time of the championship, the sale and consumption of alcohol will be legalized, but mostly limited to fan zones. Because Doha has a hot desert climate and temperatures in the summertime can easily reach 50 Celsius. For the first time in history, the World Cup will be held in November and December. This in front of you is a giant statue of Ori. The Oryx that was the mascot for the 15th Asian Games which took place in Doha back in 2006. The stadiums will be connected by the Metro which was specifically built for the World Cup. The Metro was opened in May 2019 and it's fully automated. For now it has three lines and 37 stations but eventually Doha Metro will have four lines and around 100 stations for the entire network. We're in Qatar and we're trying to use the subway. Let's see if we can do it. I have three adults with me, so we got, okay, now I gotta pay. All right, they told me it's possible to pay with a card. I'll see if I can do that. For one US dollar, you get 3.6 local currency. Okay, take your travel cards, great, beautiful. I got my cards. Let's go. <laughs> Train cars have different classes, standard class, family class, and gold class. One trip in standard class costs about half a dollar. If you decide to explore and, and just jump on the subway and travel a few stops away from the city center, the metro will be traveling above the ground and all you can see from the window is the endless desert, road intersections, and oil refineries. Qatar is working hard to make it a popular tourist destination. They had 1.8 million international visitors in 2018. The cruise industry continues to grow at a rapid pace with Qatar welcoming 31 ships in 2018, which was an 83% increase compared to 2017. At the same time, Qatar Airways operates a hub-and-spoke network linking over 150 international destinations from its base in Doha. So when you come to Doha, what are the sites? What are you going to do? Well, you can start off by visiting Qatar Cultural Village. It's a huge cultural city made in the style of old Arab buildings that has museums and galleries. There are a lot of sculptures and installations and a city beach. Another location you might want to visit is the Pearl of Qatar. Built on reclaimed land, it's a high-end luxury neighborhood that features Mediterranean-style yacht-lined marinas, luxury residences and hotels, as well as top brand name boutiques, cafes and restaurants. Walk around the promenade and you'll see rows of yachts moored on the pristine water. You can also take a water taxi across the Port Arabia Marina. I found it a bit strange again that there weren't too many people there, so it felt like being on a film set. The cool thing about this island is that it will feature the world's largest district cooling plant. It's going to be a 130,000 ton district chilled water plant that will serve the cooling needs of all buildings on the island. This is one of the few areas in Doha where foreigners are allowed to buy real estate. As a bonus, they're automatically granted residency, which extends to the owner's family for the whole duration of the ownership. How are you? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Just to give you a price range, a two bedroom apartment with sea view will be around four or five hundred thousand dollars. What a lovely weather! I love the birds singing, it's quiet, it's peaceful. 
Welcome to Qatar winter. This is what it looks like. It's really comfortable. It's about 21 Celsius. It doesn't really get too cold here. But just wait till, till March comes, then it's going to be extremely hot, and during the summertime, it's going to be 50 and above. Oh, got to get out of here before that. <laughs> Doha will surprise you. The last thing that I was expecting to see was an 88 hectare park called Aspire Park and it's the biggest in Doha. It's a huge park with fountains, a pond and some workout spots. Nice boxing. Now would you believe this is Qatar? I mean 20 years ago this was a desert. Now you see all those parks and people exercising. Wow, that is impressive. Hi, welcome to Qatar. It's a wonderful place for here, okay? So okay. you can enjoy a lot here, okay? All right, best of luck. In the evening, it's a good idea to visit some traditional markets like Sok Wakif. This is my favorite. Oh, your favorite? Yes. Wow. Because star is dark, on dark, star is shining. I'm also dark, now shining. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm from India. You're from India, okay. Yes. It's a good place to shop for some souvenirs. It also has a lot of nice looking traditional architecture. And it gives you an idea what the city might have looked like many, many years ago. Prices are usually negotiable, so practice your bargaining skills. There are a lot of restaurants and shisha bars in the area. You know, it's a typical thing in this country to find a shisha bar and smoke some fruit-flavored tobacco. Across the road, you can visit Museum of Islamic Art. Calligraphy, Islamic patterns, jewelry and textiles from three continents make up its vast collection, with some of its items dating from the 7th to the 19th centuries. The population of the city is small, and the expat community is even smaller. New arrivals can easily make friends by taking up a sport or starting a conversation with the neighbors. Excuse me, is this a CrossFit training? No, no, just normal kind of boot camp training. Oh. Just like circuit training, boot camp stuff. Oh, cool, cool. 30 seconds left. It's uh, Warrior Fit. Warrior Fit? Warrior Fit, what's that? Yeah. Uh, a new gym opening in Laguna Mall. We do outdoor and then we'll do indoor once the gym's open. Awesome, awesome. We're, okay. we're, we're just visiting for one day, so that's cool. Uh, okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thanks. Okay, last 10 seconds. Shopping malls seem like the obvious choice when you want to escape from the heat. One of the most well-known is the Venetian-inspired Villaggio Mall, which has over 200 stores. However, its indoor canal is the main attraction. Here you can take a gondola ride and look up at the painted blue sky with scattered clouds. Another popular shopping mall is City Center Doha. It's the largest in Qatar. It offers a large and diverse shopping experience and it has a multiplex cinema, a bowling alley and even an indoor ice skating rink. Some of the favorite activities for locals include camel racing, which take place in the winter time and spring when the heat goes down. The country is surrounded by the sea, so water sports are a must. Safari tours to the desert with dune bashing and land cruisers are also popular. Are you a tourist? My name is Sophia. I'm a tourist from Boston, Massachusetts. All right, and what brings you to Qatar? Actually, a layover. <laughs> I left um, Pakistan, Karachi this morning and I got here two hours later, three hours later. Now I have a 14 hour layover before I fly off to JFK. So my thought was come downtown, start at the National Museum of Islamic Art, get a kind of lay of the land from there and then walk along the Corniche all the way to city center and then to the Pearl, the beach, and hopefully see some a pretty sunset and do some shopping along the way. Oh, good, good. <laughs> and then uh, head back to the airport. Did you know much about Qatar before coming here? Literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know um, the 
obsession with architecture and art. Right. Um, and I know I have a lot of friends who are um, Islamic um, and who practice Islam. Right. So I know that that's important here. And then I read about solo female travelers in Doha specifically, which was it's safe, dress appropriately, and be respectful. Right. So I thought I'll be fine. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, enjoy your time. Thanks. Thank have you. A good one. Qatar has a staggering income and very few citizens. The income from oil enables the government of Qatar to provide its people with a number of social welfare benefits. These include free health care and housing paid for partly by the government. Education is free and scholarships are available to qualified students for study abroad or at the University of Qatar. The biggest challenge for Doha is the heat. Some local building companies have implemented various forms of cooling technology to alleviate the extremely torrid climatic conditions. Qatar is very safe, with low levels of even petty crime. Many people try to compare Doha with Dubai. Indeed, this comparison makes sense. Their starting points are very similar. Lots of oil money and the desert. Of course, Doha is not there yet, but the city is doing its best to narrow the gap. The construction is in full swing and many new sites will be open for the World Cup. Knowing how much they want to impress the world, I think it can be done. Doha is another example of how, with the right strategy in mind and the resources to back it up, you can turn any place on planet Earth, even the desert, into a thriving city of the future. And what do you guys think about Doha and Qatar? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.